Hey everybody, this is Harriet Kamek, the host of Down to Earth, the show in which we talk about the issues that matter. And today on our show, I want to talk with you about the concept of not by works. We're going to explore this in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to talk in depth about not by works. Well, what are works? Well, all the works of our hands, all the things that we do. We have faith, we have this, we have that. All the things that we're striving to do to effect the victory that is ours. But I'm going to show you that sometimes our victory comes not by the things that we have done, but by the eternal promises contained in God's word. His promise to us, his promise to us of salvation, his promise to us of victory. The works that he did, not just what Jesus did on the cross, but the works that he did in delivering people out of bondage continuously throughout the scriptures we have seen it so now we are going to know for sure that it's not by works that we are delivered it's not by works come on say not by works so I'm going to show you that it's grace through faith and it's important to have this concept because we live in a day and time when we're experiencing all kinds of travails I mean things have just gotten completely out of control like it feels like we're off the rails I imagine that that must have been how our ancestors felt at times. So what we're seeing is from generation to generation, God is still the same. So in our generation, in our time, these are the issues that confront us that we must overcome in order to leave a legacy so the next generation can pick up off. And how do we do this? By teaching this message of grace through faith, by teaching having faith in God that empowers us and helps us to stay focused on the right track, to stay focused on what we need to do. Amen? Amen. But first, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. I am Harriet Kamuk. I'm the host of Down to Earth. I'm also an author and a speaker, and I'm the founder and executive director of the Exodus Foundation. That is the foundation through which we help women and children in our community right here in Southeast Michigan. We're based in Detroit, so we're a Detroit powerhouse. So we are in Detroit, and you know Detroit is a renaissance city. We have had to come back so many times from the brink of economic collapse, so many times that we literally can write the book. In fact, the word Detroit means renaissance, <laughs> if you can believe that. So it's the city is aptly named, and I dare say the citizens who live within the borders of Detroit and the surrounding areas, we all know what that is, all of us, whether you live in Ann Arbor whether you live in Farmington Hills, Bloomfield Hills, West Bloomfield, all of us can say that we know what it means to be rebirthed over and over. But that's a testament to who we are. And that's a testament to what we do and who we are as survivors and who we are as humans. We all go through times of stress and trial and go through times when you tried it this way and it didn't work. Don't give up. Just try again. Maybe tweak it a little bit. Maybe push it a little bit. They say the meaning of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. But sometimes the formula is something you have to work over and over again. I'm a firm believer in not giving up. Maybe you have to tweak it. Maybe you have to go back to that business plan. Maybe you just have to walk by faith and say, hey, I gave the bank my business plan and they didn't accept it. Maybe it's just time to go in and say, what's up? That's what we say here in Detroit. We say, what's up? How is it going, man? Is, it, is, is this okay? I'm, I'm trying here. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Amen? We are a renaissance city, and I dare say, I speak that into your life, that it's not by works that we're going to get through this. Amen? So go to my website, the HarrietKamuk.com. I almost said the Harry Kamuk Foundation. <laughs> go to my website, HarrietKamuk.com, and visit our page. From there, there is a link to the Exodus Foundation, and see how we too designed and desire to give women and children fleeing violence and trafficking an exit from that. And we desire to give them an exodus and we're using the word of God to do it. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much in advance for your support. So without further ado, I want to step into this and I want to take you into the scriptures. It's uh, so I'm going to put my glasses on. Don't laugh at me. Right. So we have 40 year old plus eyes. Yeah, we'll be on 40 long ago. And we're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. And I know many of you out there are saying, Amen. <laughs> so if it's you and you find that you're at work struggling a little bit, go get some readers. <laughs> it's going to be okay, right? So Ephesians chapter 2 is where we find ourselves this week. And our focus, though being on verses 8 
to nine. I'm going to read it in your hearing so that we all know where we are. So I'm reading from the new King James version of the Holy Scriptures. Okay, so this is a Bible app downloaded to my iPad, right? Okay, so here's what it says. Ephesians chapter two, verse one, it says, and you, he made alive. This is Paul, the apostle, the writer of Ephesians. He wrote to the people at Ephesus. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. That's all of us. We we're all dead in trespasses and sins. And Jesus came to save us. In which you once walked. Here he confirms it. According to the course of this world. So we live in a world where anything goes. We live in a world where with free will. We have taken it as far as our humanity can go. According to the prince of the power of the air. Now in previous scriptures the Bible identifies the devil as the prince of the power of the air, right? So he's above in the first heavens. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So if you have someone around you and we are all have been disobedient at some point, that's what it is, it's the prince and the power of the air. It is Satan's job and his desire to destroy us, to separate us from the will of God, because in so doing, the will of God or our lives will do what? Bring you peace, joy, comfort, and victory. But it is Satan's desire to separate you from that. And so you become disobedient to the will of God for your life. And you might say, well, Harriet, what is the will of God for my life? I'm glad you asked. Let's pray with you for you to find out. It's individual. What is the will of God for your life is not necessarily going to be the same for me. And it's not going to be the same for your partner, your spouse, your parent, or your child. This is why it's an individual responsibility that we turn on and activate. Amen. And so the Bible continues in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh. So we all went to college. And we all hung out all night. Did everything we wanted. That was the lust of the flesh in every way possible. And the people say, Amen. You're all smiling, right? Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Many of us can write books about how we did that, right? All the stuff we did that we can't even talk about in our youth, right? And of the mind, we, anything that came to mind and we had the youth, we did it. And we're by nature children of wrath, just as the others, just like everybody else. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love. So God was like a parent watching us, carrying on in our youth and carrying on. He watched us, still gave us mercy because we're still here. We managed to survive that. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says because of his great mercy... His great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Because by grace now we have been saved, right? And raised us up together. Listen to that. Made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. So he's pulling us out of the darkness into his light. Pulling us out of the darkness that our minds were under. That we have to continue living a lifestyle that is hurtful to us. Amen. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. When it says ages to come here, it's speaking of times yet that have not come. Times yet to come to pass. That as we age and we grow older, we realize the folly of our youthful ways. And we kind of sit down and have a come to Jesus moment. And we come back from that and ask God to have mercy. You realize that it was the mercy of God that at 20 and at 19 when you were driving crazy and drunk out of your mind that you didn't crash and ended up on our trailer, on our tractor trailer. You didn't end up in jail. And now you realize that somehow God had his hand on all of us. Amen. For by grace, in verse number 8 of Ephesians 2, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. And here's what it says in verse number 9 of Ephesians 2. It says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. Father, in the name of Jesus, let me decrease so that you might increase. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be accepted in your sight this day. Give us the victory in every area. I pray for someone watching, someone listening right now who needs a miracle. Someone needs an answer about a job tomorrow. Someone who needs a loan from the bank to continue the perpetuation of their business. Someone needs to send a child to school and needs that loan to go through. Oh God, hear your people. Someone on a hospital bed. Someone contemplating surgery. Be a fence 
around us every day. Keep somebody, Jesus. Save somebody's marriage from divorce in the name of Jesus. Change someone's heart, oh God. Turn them back unto you, Jesus. Give us the victory in our business this week. Give us the victory in our health this week in the name of Jesus. Somebody has to go to the doctor this week. Somebody has to go do a follow-up, do a test. May, in the name of Jesus, may all those tests come back. May they come back with a good report from the great physician in the sky in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us this week as we go in Jesus' mighty name. And we all say, amen. Amen. So here's what the Bible says. The Bible says it's not by works, lest anyone should boast. In another translation, it says it's not by works, lest any man should boast. But it is the work of Jesus Christ who saved us. That is what has saved us. In other words, I wasn't feeling well this morning. I'm going to be honest with you and transparent. I haven't been feeling well for two weeks. And this morning in particular, it seemed like everything was coming against me. And I literally had to stand in my closet while getting dressed and say, Lord God, I beg you, if there's anything that I have done that is displeasing to you, please forgive me. I can't think what it is, but maybe I did. I said, if there's something that I should have done that I haven't done, please forgive me, oh God, but give me the strength to go and finish my course, to finish what you have sent me to do. It is important that I do this today. All I'm asking is grace for the day. Tomorrow, I'll wake up again and I'll ask for grace for tomorrow. But right now, right where you are, it's grace for the day. Sometimes we drive ourselves crazy. And let us not pitter-patter around the issue here. There are many things that afflict us depending on who we are and where we come from. There are some things that are common to us. We are all grown now. We have raised children. Some of us are still raising children. And whatever afflicts them, afflicts us. Some of us are caught in that mid sandwich generation where you're raising children and taking care of elderly parents at the same time. It's all stress. Then you have to deal with work. You have to deal with marital relationships. You have to deal with community relationships around you. It's all works. We have a lot going on. So all of this is stress and you're still striving to finish. Take a chill pill, dial it all the way back and focus on what is it that I must do. Sometimes you have to become so integrally selfish that even when you, you might say, Harriet, I'm a Christian. You might say, Harriet, I'm a pastor. I'm trying to tell my kid, my husband, my wife how to live and they won't live and it is driving you crazy. Stop. It's not by works. What you have done is recorded in heaven. Let God do the recording. God is watching. God is watching you tell them how to live. When you have told them how to live, the responsibility for them turning around is not up to you. You have done your part. You raised them. You told them what to do. You tried to show them the, the, the enmity that could come between them and you. You tried to show them what could happen. It's not by works that they're going to be saved. It is the saving grace of Jesus Christ and his life that he paid on the cross. I know today in our culture today, especially in popular culture, it's not popular to say things like that. Nobody wants to hear about who saved who. Every man thinks he is God unto himself. That is exactly what the problem is. We all think that we are an end to ourselves. I am the self-sustaining one. God forgive me. I'm not saying that about me, Jesus, please. Uh, I'm the self-existent one. I can fulfill all my needs. I'm a millionaire. I'm a billionaire. I got zillions, trillions, killions. I don't even know what they have left. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. None of us are going to get into the kingdom of heaven. And why is it important? Because you have to have something to look forward to. We're not preaching about living in heaven. We're preaching about living here on earth. Because here's the thing. If you submit to God that, Lord, in this situation, I have done my very best. I have done everything that I could do. Then you are saved. Not by your works, but Jesus is going to intercede on your behalf. Let's say you have a business. You've done everything you could. The pandemic came and wiped out your business. Wiped out a business that was already on the brink. Wiped out everything you worked hard for and saved up for. The pandemic did it to all of us worldwide. You're not alone. So what do you say now that you look at the embers that are left? What do you say now? I'm a nonprofit. 
That means I rely on what? Contributions. I can't tell you when was the last time I got a contribution. I'm literally living by grace. I kid you not. So if you, in your good intentions, don't sit down and think about organizations like mine and say, well, I don't have a lot, but I can send you $5 or $20, we don't survive. So what do I do now that I have done everything that I could have? I have stood on the mountain. I have called it forth. I have stretched my hand out and helped everyone. What do I do? I sit back and say, not by works, lest any man should boast. The next help that I'm going to get is not going to come by anything I've done. It's going to come by the grace of God. That's what you do. So you look at your business and you look at the law, what I call the law of diminishing returns. <laughs> you poured everything into it and all it is is negative, negative, negative. You look in your bank account, negative, negative, negative. You look around your children griping and quarreling because the lifestyle that they used to live, they can't get it anymore. Negative, negative, negative. Your spouse over there hanging out, crying and carrying on and misery on top of misery on top of misery and it's just misery and it's all negative. This is the time when you say to yourself, is this what I want for my life? Is this how I'm supposed to be? You give it to Jesus. He's the author. And the finisher of our faith he's alpha and he's omega if he started it he will finish it give it up to Jesus let him decide and determine and they might not like your position they might not like the position that you take but ask yourself I, I just want you to sit picture this for yourself here's the deal here's how it all works out at the end of the day is only one of us going down in the pine box all your family and friends all of them, they're not going down with you. I guarantee you when they start throwing the dirt over that pine box, they're not going to jump in. It's only you who's going to go in there. So if you can think about that finality and ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth my life? I'm human. I have taken on all of this. I know I need help and I can't even get the help from the people around me. I can't even get their support. They're still looking, your children who can help themselves are still coming to you and saying, do this, do that, dad, do this, mom, do this, do that, do that. And you're looking at them like, can you give me a break? Can I get a break? Well, your break has come. It says right here, not by works, lest any man should boast. And there are many of us who are sitting in the seat of discomfort, right? We went to school. Imagine how you must feel. You went to school to study, to become a doctor, to study, to become a banker. And you can't even get a job in that field to pay off those huge student loans. How do you feel? You must feel bad, don't you? And then you're saying to yourself, how am I gonna take care of my family? How am I gonna start a family? I wanna get married, I can't get married, I can't do this. Stop, it's not by works. I know it is hard to do because we have been socialized into thinking that it's our will that everything is our will and it's dependent on you and your effort. You hear this all the time. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Here it is. You have done all the pulling up by your bootstraps. No, you're going to submit it to God. And you're going to pray over it. And you're going to ask God to help you. I have come to that place many times where I tried everything, where I thought I tried everything. And just at the point where I have, was going to give up, I had to learn to say, Lord, it's not my will, but thy will be done. That's powerful, isn't it? Very powerful. So God is saying to us that he works in us through things. Therefore, we can't boast about our salvation, our abilities, our gifts, our talents. Those things come from God. The Bible says that God gives to each man a measure of faith. The Bible also says that God gives freely of gifts and talents. So you see all these people who are singing, don't listen to people telling you that it comes from the devil. That's their free will that is operating. God gives them the gift to go sing and act and make movies, to make money for themselves, to what? Help themselves and better themselves. We need to stop looking at people through the eyes of envy and look at people that they're utilizing their gifts. What have we done with the gifts that we have been given? What did we do with it? We, did we just sit back and just expect everything to come into our laps or did we go after it? And if you went after it and it still didn't work, don't give up. Submit it to God. 
there is a place where it comes where you just say, Lord, I can't try. Come on, say it with me. Lord, I have done this all. Lord, I submit to you. Lord, I can't do anymore. Lord, please help me. And just submit it to God. Amen. My deliverance, my victory is not by my works. It is by the work that Christ has did on the cross. He suffered that I might die. So we need to say, Lord, I'm suffering right now, but you say Jesus suffered. So I'm going to submit this to you, Jesus, and I ask you to take this completely over. I can't think about it. I have to rewire my brain. I know that this is going to require us to rethink how we have traditionally thought about ourselves and our capacity because sometimes that's what it's referencing for us. It's making us feel like we're incapable of taking care of stuff. But that's not true. You are capable of surviving. You are capable of taking care of this. But there comes a point where you can't, you just have to exhale. Amen? So I, I want to take us through this just a little bit. That the problems of our life today are caused by Satan. Consequently, the salvation... And the restoration has to come through Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know it's not popular, but do we care about what is popular? Where has that popular theology gotten us? Landed us in a boat of trouble. Landed us with viruses that we can't even contain, we can't talk about. Landed us in trouble that we can't think about. We're just in a downward spiral going round. This is us. This is humanity going round and round. We create another pill over here, another upper, another... That's all it is. It's another upper. But it has all these side effects that spins off it. We create another one for another mood. And it's just all these side effects. No. The problems are caused by Satan. I tell you this that I have found. You know you're coming to a great victory when you are challenged and pushed the most. If everything around you is gone to pot and everything is just going crazy around you, that's how you know you're coming to a victory. In the midst of that storm, just sit back and say to yourself, Lord, this is a storm that I can't get out of. I need you to come right into it. There is a river that flows out of the mouth of God that can come and bring me victory. And that's what you have to ask yourself and say over and over, Lord, I need your river of blessings. This one, Jesus, is not by my works. I'm human. I can't do anything more, Jesus. Help me, oh God. Help me. Help me, Jesus. And when we get to that point, when we start saying, help, oh God, help me, Jesus, that is when the salvation will come. Amen? Amen. So it's not by works. It's by the work of Jesus. Satan was already defeated. This is why we have to educate ourselves. This is why I encourage everybody, pick up the Bible and read it. You have an off day, you have an off minute, 10 minutes, you have five minutes, just pick up the Bible and read it. You don't even have to go into a place to buy the Bible today. You can download the Bible app to your device and just read what the scriptures have to say. So before we go, I just want us to remember this. I only have a few minutes and I want to take some time to pray with you. I want to take some time to pray that you experience the victory that is coming. Listen, friends, I started Harry Kemmock Ministries with nothing. I started the Exodus Foundation with nothing. We didn't have a building. I probably had $100 to open a bank account with it. We started with nothing and God has made something out of my nothing. He took my mess and made a message out of my mess. If he did it for me, he will do it for you. If he raised me up out of violence and abuse and made me survive all of that so that I can stretch a hand out now to help others, he will do it for you. He had, I have seen my business go down many times. I've had to rewire, rechange, do all kinds of stuff. But if God did it for me, he can do it for you. So let me just pray with you in the next few minutes. Father, in Jesus' name, I submit to you. Come on, say it with me. I submit to you that you are Lord of my life. I forgive me for all of my sins. Now I understand that it's not by works, not by anything I could do that I will survive this, but it's by you. And in Jesus' name, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We thank you so much, everybody. Be blessed today.